Now you'll be asked uh, by other members which Supreme Court presidents you like and don't like. But as you know, it's uh, inappropriate for a nominee to, to uh, answer those questions. And this refers to Judge Ginsburg. She said, quote, a judge sworn to decide impartiality can offer, offer no forecasts, no hints, for that would show not only disregard for the specifics of a particular case, it would display disdain for the entire judicial process. End of quote. The underlying reason for this, of course, is that making promises or giving hints undermines the very independence that we've discussed. Would you agree with that? I, d I do, Senator, um, Mr. Chairman. And one of the things that um, I have to remember sitting in this seat is that this moment is a moment of judicial independence with how I interact with uh, this committee. And what I've done in, in each of the jobs I've had, and particularly as a judge over the last 12 years, but also in the executive branch, you always ask, my, I always ask myself, and I tell people I'm working with to ask, how has it been done before? How has it been done before? So as a judge, how has it been done before is precedent. That's how has it been done before. When I'm sitting here, what did I do? I went and studied all the nominee precedent. I've studied, I've read Thurgood Marshall's hearing and Justice Brennan's hearing, and I've read the hearings of the eight justices currently sitting on the Supreme Court. It's what I call nominee precedent. And so all the nominees currently sitting on the Supreme Court, all the justices, have made clear a couple things. First of all, they can't discuss cases or issues that might come before them. As Justice Ginsburg said, no hints, no forecasts, no previews. Uh, that also means, with respect to at least the vast body of Supreme Court precedent going back, you can't give a thumbs up or thumbs down on the case. That's Justice Kagan's formulation. She said repeatedly, no thumbs up or thumbs down when she was asked, what do you think about this case? What do you think about that case? I liked her formulation there, no thumbs up or thumbs down. That nominee precedent, as I call it, is now, in my view, part of the independence of the judiciary. And that nominee precedent is something I need to adhere to when I am here as a nominee now, because that's one of my jobs here is not to uh, advance my own interest. But remember, I'm a representative of the judiciary as a whole, and I have a responsibility to ju judicial independence right here, right now as a nominee. So following that nominee precedent is going to be critical. Now, there's an exception that the eight justices have drawn uh, currently sitting on the court. If you read all the hearings, for some older cases, and I'll be happy to uh, use some older cases, not, that where nominee precedent does allow the justices, uh, has allowed them to talk about a few uh, older cases. And again, why do we do this? Why is this nominee precedent there when eight justices of, of widely ranging views do this? There must be a reason. The reason is judicial independence. What does that mean? It means two things in this context. One, the litigants who come before us have to know we have an open mind, that we don't have a closed mind, that we haven't committed something in this process that is going to affect how we decide a case because we feel bound by what we promised to this committee. And believe me, judges do feel bound by what they said to this committee. So if I say something and the case comes before me five years from now, I'm going to feel morally bound by what I said here. And if I've crossed the line of what I should say, then I'm not going to have an open mind in that case. That's, that's a violation of judicial independence. Secondly, as Chief Justice Roberts described perhaps better than anyone, if I get in, into some kind of process that appears to be a bargaining process where I say, well, I'll agree with this decision in exchange for your vote, it's never that explicit. But that's, as Chief Justice Roberts described it, that's kind of the, uh, what, what, what seems to be going on sometime. Well, that's a complete violation of judicial independence. Because then the judges aren't making the decisions based on their reading of the law. It's really, the, as Chief Justice Roberts described it, it's the Senate or the Senate Judiciary Committee really sending a nominee as a delegate to the judiciary and really doing what the Senate Judiciary Committee thinks is the right thing to do. Chief Justice Roberts explained very forcefully that doing that would be a violation of judicial independence. That nominee precedent weighs heavily on me as a nominee here. Uh, because it's rooted in judicial independence, and I've said uh, repeatedly already 
that I'm going to be an independent judge. Well, I have to be an independent nominee as well, so I'm going to have to adhere to the lines drawn uh, by those prior nominees, Mr. Chairman.